Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. And in today's quick tutorial, I wanted to show you how to set up a simple yet powerful studio stage scene using Cinema 4D and Redshift. Once you have the scene set up, you can put anything in it to give it that beautiful, dramatic stage lighting look. All right, with that, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and I'm gonna move fast on this one since the point of this demo is to show you how quickly you can get stuff set up. I'm gonna grab a plane and I'm gonna grab a spotlight. So we first need Redshift turned on. Go into your render settings, turn on Redshift, go up into the Redshift menu, click on lights and let's click on spotlight. Now, I want this spotlight to aim just right here in the middle of my scene. So for that, I need a target. Click on this triangle here and click on add target tag and null. You want this to be right in the center of your scene. So grab your place tool and just click right there in the middle. From now on, no matter where you move this spotlight, it will always aim right there in the center of the scene. For this, I'm just gonna aim it way off to the side and I wanna shrink down that spotlight quite a bit here. I'm gonna take our cone angle and shrink it down. Okay, so now we need an object that'll just sit here right in the middle of the scene. For that, I'm gonna use one of our models. If you're a Grace Cook World Plus member, you can go into the Models tab and click any one of these models. I love this little origami swan. I'm gonna double click it. Right now it looks like it just is exactly where I want it. If it's not where you want it, grab your place tool and just move it around the scene. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit so I can look through it towards the light. Okay, let's make sure our spotlight is aimed at our swan, perfect. And let's also grab our spotlight again and turn down this cone angle. Let's now fire up our IPR inside of Redshift and see what we're working with. Now I hit my uh, spotlight, so let's undo that. Let's move around. You can see the first thing is we just need a ton more light. So let's go into our spotlight and go to our exposure and crank it up. Next thing we need to do is add a material to the floor and also to our swan. So I'm gonna use a couple of our Grayscale Grill Plus materials. The first one is concrete. And we have a ton of concretes here, um, really beautiful. I love this grungy concrete, uh, there it is, concrete grungy. I'm gonna drag this right onto our floor. And you're gonna see this adds a nice little detail and it's scaled up too large uh, just because our floor is really large. So I'm gonna add some uh, tiles here just by adding tiles right here within the material. Now you can see we have some nice uh, detail on the floor here. And it, we have this lovely image of like, this object is on stage or something like that. You can imagine a whole audience back here kind of looking at this. But now our swan doesn't have a material and uh, it's not really reflecting light realistically. So for this one, I wanna add a paper material. And we have a ton of these awesome papers too. I love these graph papers. We have, uh, let's do this paper graph grid and drag it right onto the swan. And what's really great about these paper materials is they actually allow light to shine through them as well. So you can see where the object is folded a um, little bit more densely. There's less light coming through than here where you can actually see multiple layers of the paper. Okay, so once we're this close on a small object, uh, one thing to keep in mind is your depth of field. Now we have no camera in this scene, so let's grab a Redshift camera. Let's go to our standard camera and let's go turn this on. Let's go into our optical tab. Actually, let's go to our object tab first and select a camera lens that makes more sense for the scene. In this case, this is a really small object. So we're gonna have to zoom way in, maybe 200 millimeters here, and then move our camera out to really get closer up on this object. Okay, so from here, you can see that everything is in focus. All of this little detail is in focus and we definitely don't want that. We need to tell our camera to act more realistically to really dial in this effect. So let's grab our optical uh, tab. Let's go down to bokeh. Let's turn it on and let's set our aperture to four. And this will make it so blurry. There's not even anything here. So we have to tell our camera what to focus on. Let's go into our optical tab. And right here in object is what we want to tell it to focus. Now we could just put the swan in this object, but we could get even more detail by adding a focus null. By adding a null, typing focus as its name, you don't have to call it focus, you could call it whatever you want, but I call it focus so I could find it easier. Then you drag it into your scene, 
grab the focus, grab your place tool, and I just literally click on what I want to be in focus. And that will remain in focus no matter where I put my camera. Now look at this. With very, very minimal one light, one floor, one object, we have this beautiful little scene here. And if we keep dialing this in, you'll see that we could add even more detail with just a few more tweaks. First thing is the depth of field may be a little bit too much. So let's go to our camera and let's set something like six. And let's also uh, go into our LUTs and add a little bit of a LUT. I'm gonna open up our tab here, click on the gear. I'm gonna turn on LUT and I'm gonna make sure I'm using the Advantix 200 LUT and this is built in the redshift, so make sure uh, you give this one a go. By default, it's a little too contrasty for me for this scene, so I'm just gonna use it at about 50, 60%. And now uh, I'm just worried about all of this little detail here. I love how much shadow is in this scene, but this is a little bit too much. So how do we add a quick fill? Let's go to our redshift tab, go to lights, click on dome light, and boom, we get a fill light pretty quickly. Uh, it's just a little too bright for the scene, so let's tone this down. And now we're getting nice little details here on our shadow. And let's also add a little bit of variation on our spotlight by going into our spotlight and going into this texture area and putting a gobo in here. Uh, this is a really powerful technique. All, and we have an entire tab here, if you're a Grayscale Grill Plus member, uh, just for these gobos. We even have animated ones. So let's go try some of these abstract ones by default. This will add a little bit of variation. And I'm also gonna shrink our spotlight down even more. Uh, we're getting into really teeny tiny details here, but I think it's important to scale it down. And now we have variation on our light. Uh, I may have to turn it up a little bit more, but now look at this. We have all this nice variation of our light coming through. And we can try different ones just by dragging them into uh, this area over here. And of course we have uh, these little windows and stuff like that as well. Uh, this might not work well on a stage, but instantly now it looks like it's on a table and we have some beautiful light coming in through our window. And now maybe we scale this up a bit and uh, we got this beautiful lighting here. So you can get very experimental here. Just try all of these. Uh, like I said, there's even animated ones. We have other tutorials to show you how to set all this stuff up. But the point of today's video is really to show you how with only a few simple lights, a few really nice materials and your camera set up in the right way, you can get a beautiful scene just like this in seconds. I'm gonna dial up our fill light here and bam, I love that. If you end up using something like this, following along and making your little simple scene, please hit it up in the comments below. I love seeing this stuff and I love hearing uh, how you guys use this in your work as well. All right, that's it. And I always appreciate when you leave a comment. Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget, if you're looking to learn more about Redshift, we have some amazing free training over at grayscalegorilla.com slash redshift. Just click the link below to sign up for a free Grayscale Gorilla account and you'll have instant access to over 16 hours of Redshift training to get you all caught up with the latest versions. And with that, I hope to see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye everyone.